Knitters. Barbara Benson here at the A Good Yarn Sarasota Knitting Table for our Wednesday uh, Around the Table talk about what is hot in the shop. Um, just want to have some fun and talk about knitting. Uh, as always, we are closed to the public from noon to one so that we can bring this um, broadcast, for a lack of a better word, to you. So uh, Susan Post, our, the owner, is in the office on her computer, ready to answer any questions you might have in the comments, anything I miss. I try to see the things as they go by, but I miss some. Our amazing Susan F. is also here. She'll grab the phones and is occasionally uh, co-opted into being a model. So, but we are very so socially distanced, so I can take my mask off to talk to y'all. So, let's get that off. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Um, <laughs> do, do, do. Let's put that way over there. Hi, y'all. Welcome. I'm so excited that you joined us here today live. And also welcome if you're watching the rerun of this later because you know, we know not everybody's available right now. But that is why we save it and put it here. And it also goes up on the A Good Yarn Sarasota YouTube channel if you want to go and watch past videos and see all the fun stuff we talk about. Hello, Debbie. Sunny 40 degrees in Wisconsin. <laughs> better you than me. Just kidding. You know, Wisconsin is lovely. Um, I actually went to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool a couple year, for a couple years running and it was a lot of fun. Um, apparently I also lived in Wisconsin for a short period of time when I was like two years old for like six months. So I have no memory of it, but I lived in Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm sure I ate lots of cheese because you have great cheese. And it's sunny in Pennsylvania as well. Excellent. Welcome, Cindy. Um, that is awesome. So we've got a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. But as always, I'm going to start off the uh, episode, for lack of a better word, I don't know what to call this thing, um, uh, talking about we are open to the public uh, from 11 to 3. Monday through Saturday, uh, except for, as I said, on Wednesdays, we are closed from noon to one so that we can do this Facebook Live. Who else? Pinehurst. Hello, Carol. That's nice. Okay. See, you guys distract me. So, Carol, believe it or not, when I was in high school, I went to the Pinehurst Golf Academy one summer and took golf stuff. So that was heck fun. Pinehurst is absolutely beautiful. Hi, Marianne, 61 in Cincinnati. I'm enjoying this weather. Hey, Janet, Jennifer, everybody's here. Okay, so we are open uh, from 11 to three, except on Wednesdays when we are closed from 12 to one. Uh, we're closed on Sundays as well. We cannot currently have any safe way for everybody to knit inside, but since the weather is so beautiful, we encourage you to, we have some chairs or bring your own more comfortable chair and you can sit outside under, there is an overhang, there's, there's a ceiling part and chat. We have quite a few ladies out there right now. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It is gorgeous and you can do your knitting and have like enjoy the outside and be socially distanced obviously if you come into shop we hope you do we uh, ask that you maintain proper social distancing and wear a mask um hello margaret snow in mississippi Ooh, that's cold um so as i said we really can't really be knitting inside of the store and we are currently offering classes via Zoom. So we wanted to continue our educational opportunities and we use Zoom to do that. That way anybody from anywhere can take the class. Um, we have one coming up on uh, this weekend, Saturday, February the 27th from one to three with Carol on Zoom and it is a seeming 101. It's a finishing class to teach you how to join together and make those projects be all that you made in pieces all put together. Hey, Elizabeth. 
And so I actually wrote down, because there's a lot you're gonna learn in this class. You're gonna learn mattress stitch for side seams, mattress stitch to attach ribbing, mattress stitch in the purl technique, because there are different ways to do the mattress stitch depending on what you're joining to each other. She also is going to teach you how to seam bound off edges to each other and how to graft both vertic a vertical piece to a horizontal piece. So something you've knit this way and something you've knit this way and graft them together. So those are all different ways of seaming and Carol is gonna teach you how to tackle each of those challenges. Now also, um, I teach classes on Tuesday nights from five to six o'clock. They're little bite-sized classes, you know, because we don't wanna overtax our brains too much and just learn a little, an hour at a time, focusing on one particular subject. And we have a lot of fun. I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. Uh, it's scheduled five to six. We frequently want run over a little bit. It's just what it is. But uh, I try to get all the really good information in the hour if, you if you're if you pressed for time. But there's usually a little extra at the end. Um, Southeastern, okay, I'm just looking. I'm looking at all these things just go by and it's very distracting. So uh, next week, I'm going to be teaching Magic Loop. Now Magic Loop is a uh, knitting technique where you use a long circular needle to knit something that is of a small circumference. It is really excellent for doing socks, uh, for doing uh, sleeves, and if you're knitting a hat and you start with a longer needle, you can knit the whole hat on one needle instead of starting with like a 16 and then having to switch to DPNs at the end or if you're doing like fingerless mitts or anything like that. So it's a way to avoid <laughs> using DPNs and a way to stretch your needle inventory. For this class, you will need to have a needle that is at least 32 inches, a circular needle that is at least 32 inches long. Excuse me. And longer better, 40 is good, and we're just gonna do a little swatch and you can learn the magic loop technique. I use magic loop for just about everything I knit in the round because <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, who else is going on? Oh, we got all these people. Julie, Margaret, Jennifer, Debbie, welcome. So that is, Magic Loop is next week. Now, March, Tuesday, March 9th, I'm going to be teaching mosaic color work. Mosaic color work is a way of doing something that looks like you're doing something really fancy, like fancy color work, and it really isn't, because all you're doing is knitting stripes and slipping stitches. So it is really the easiest thing, the easiest form of color work other than just straight up knitting stripes. Um, it's just like a tiny half step more complicated than knitting stripes. And what that means is you are only ever working with one strand of yarn at a time. So you're knitting in one color and when you get to the beginning of the next right side row, you drop that color, pick up the other color and then knit a stripe, a two row stripe. So you're, only, you're dropping and picking up and it is a super fun way. Hi, Kate, Marco Island, that's super cool, hello. Um, now, March 16th, I'm gonna be teaching a class that is gonna be really good if you are a newer knitter. I'm going to be teaching a pattern reading class because really learning knitting is learning a whole new language and patterns have specific structures and perspectives you know, different elements and getting you ready to tackle reading and understanding a pattern um, is one of the things you just need to learn how to do. Hello, Barbara from Fort Myers. Fort Myers, that's not far. Okay, March 23rd, we're gonna be doing a tips and tricks for working with variegated yarns, specifically focusing on those gorgeous hand-dyed variegated yarns that you fall in love with in the store and you get home and then they sit on yourself and they stare accusingly at you saying, why haven't you knit with me yet? And it's because you can't figure out what pattern is going to allow them to be as beautiful in the, your knits as it was in the skein. And so that's what that class, so if you're a variegated yarn lover, but have struggled with pairing your yarn with a pattern, Tips and Tricks for Working with Variegated Yarn is the class for you. 
And then rounding out March on the 30th, I'm gonna be teaching beginning cables. And that's pretty straightforward. We're gonna, we just finished beginning lace last week. We're gonna learn how to get your toes in the water for cables. So that is all the classes I have written down on my piece of paper. Let me check things off. Pa-ching, pa-ching. Okay, we got something in uh, this week that I know quite a few of you have been waiting for. If you have gotten the Addy Rockets squared and fallen in love with them, as so many have, I would show you the interchangeable set, but again, we have sold out of them. The Addy Rocket Square is a squared off needle that is better for your hands. It helps ease repetitive strain issues that people have, but it doesn't fit in standard uh, gauge measures. And so we now have, dun, 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 we have from our one of our favorite vendors, Katrinkles, we have a gauge measure for the Addy Rocket Squared. So you can just set them in these edges and you can check and see what size you have. So are these on the, um, they're up on the website. Susan was like, I'm, I'm gonna get this done in time for, for the table talk. So there we go. It is awesome. You can hang it off anything in your, you can hang it off your bag. You can put it wherever you keep all your notions, but here we go. And since I was playing with this, I happened to wander over to the wander over to the Tower of Notions. I love the Notions Tower. If you've been in the store, it's this column that's covered with different notions. And I noticed to start off with how many different row counters we have. So one of the things when you're knitting that you got to do is keep track because if it tells you knit 28 rows, I mean, you run out of fingers very quickly. So I pulled out all the different row counters. Now, the most traditional one, the one you see the most often is, this is called the barrel style uh, row counter. And it just, these little things twist. They actually have a hole in the end. And like if you're knitting on a long cable flat, you can actually thread this onto your needle and it lives on the cable which is really cool, um, but it also can get in your way. So you can just keep it. So these are great. And really it's one of those things you should have a row counter in pretty much every project that you have. Um, oh. Now we have these two, which are different types of the push button row counters. These are like tally counters. And all you do is you push this down, see? And this is just a different style. It does the exact same thing, but you just push it down and you can do the counting. These ha these both have um, little, well, no, this one does. This The big difference here is this one is just a little rectangle and this one has a little hole on it so you can make it into like a necklace. You can hang this around your neck if you wanted to. So those are the push button style then we have these which i think are really cool so this is a little tiny it's electronic uh you push the little button to turn it on and you push this i don't know if i can do it through there we go little button turns it on and then this is your count and it goes to sleep and you can see it looks like a tiny wash you wear it over your finger um, I personally love using this one. I do not wear it on my finger and I don't know, I mean, cause I don't know a lot of people that hold their needles like that. I wear it on my thumb. Oh, uh, Jenna mentioned also that the green one locks. Okay. Well, that's really cool. Yep. She's right. There we go. So that's another difference between the, the square rectangle and the round one. Um, Jenna, I really like this one. I like the thumb one. I wear it on my left thumb and it stays out of the way. And I find it very friendly to the way I knit to just hit that thumb, uh, that thumb button. But I also know people that can't figure out exactly how to, what finger to wear it on. But I really like this one. And if you like the ring style, we also have these, which are really cool. And it is a more, um, it looks like jewelry. And this is one of those things, these secret things that 
is a knitting accessory, but other people aren't gonna know it's a knitting accessory unless they look really careful at it. Let me get it out of here. There's a lot of packaging. I probably should have done this ahead of time. Come on. No, it's stuck in there, you can see it. So it is actually a really lovely ring and it has two separate cylinders that you rotate around to count your stitches and you can wear it on your thumb or your finger. I think we have them mostly in larger sizes like this is a 12 because typically people wear them on their thumbs because that is the uh, portion of your fingers that are least likely to get in the way when you are knitting or crocheting. I'm sure you could use these for crochet just as easily. So those are the different row counters that we have. <laughs> so it, I just like, I was like, wow, look at all those row counters. And next to the row counters, something else you should have in every knitting bag or crochet bag, or frankly, weaving bag, tapestry needles or darning needles or whatever you want to call these. These are your yarn needles that you use to do everyone's favorite part of the knitting process, weaving in ends. Because you know, that's just like, everybody's like, I can't wait to weave in the ends. So these are the big mambo jumbo ones for bulky yarns. And then we have larger, oh yeah. And then we have, these are also larger ones. So what it is, is they're different kinds. These are the jumbo ones. And we love these because they come in these little plastic tubes that keeps everything safe. This set is, they tell you what size they are, but I really don't know how big they are. This is three different sizes, and these are sort of in the middling range. So these are gonna be good for, the smallest one is gonna be good for fingering weight up into the DK Sport weight. This one has a jumbo, a middle, and a small. And then this one, I'm trying to figure out how to show it to you. This one is for your lace knitters out there, because this has the tiny, tiny, tiny ones. So. There's different sizes of these, and depending on what you're knitting, and Susan just brought over to me to remind me that we have a lot of this fun stuff in our little handy dandy A Good Yarn pouches. So this one has stitch markers, a fix-it tool, and a tape measure. And that is, the Fix-It tool is the other thing. So this is one of our Fix-It style tools, right? And then we also have the Fix-A-Stitch, which is a really great tool, and it comes in different sizes. So this set has a, essentially it's for uh, bulky, medium, and then fingering weight, and then these little tiny ones are for lace weight, and can also be used, and it comes with this tube so they don't get lost. And here are some fancier ebony ones. But again, they're sort of like little crochet hooks that you can keep and fix your work with. And you know, we have pre-made kits like this, but we also have these separately and you could make your own kit for your knitting bags. This larger one has, let's see what we got in here, stitch markers. As I said, you gotta have those guys. And this one has a gauge measure in it. So you can always add to these and they're just great. So I just wanted to show you, you know, it's not all about yarn. It's also about bags and notions because <laughs> there's so much fun stuff and so many little things that you can get to make your knitting more enjoyable. So those are all my notions and stuff. Okay, new yarn. Is this, uh, is the Barocco a brand new yarn everywhere or just new to us? So this is a new yarn to us. I came in, I'm like, ooh, what's that? But also new everywhere. This is a new one from Barocco. We love Barocco because they make beautiful, consistent yarn and they offer excellent pattern support. And what in, that's sort of um, yarn store lingo. What we mean by pattern support is that they, when they put out a yarn, have already commissioned designers to design patterns that use that yarn so that we can give you ready-made ideas of what to do with this gorgeous yarn. 
Oh, we have an answer. Oh, Cuppy. Oh, you need to delete that, Susan. We got some spam. Excellent. We're on that spam. No spamming, people. No. Okay. We are figuring out. Please ignore the troll. Okay. So, this is Barocco Summer Sesame. We've carried their regular sesame in the past, which was a wool product. This is a warm weather product. The yarn content is 47% cotton, 44% acrylic, and 9% nylon. This is 295 yards in 100 grams. So it's definitely in the DK to sport range. I'm gonna say DK. It is machine washed separately in cold water on delicate cycle, lay flat to dry. So it is machine washable. Don't put it in the dryer. That's gonna be the cotton in there. It is gorgeous and um, we have this color which I, I'm showing you probably my favorite first. I love it. Um, color, the exciting color name is 5237. <laughs> But it's got the pinks and the greens and the blues. I think this looks like sunset on the beach I, or sunrise. This pink is more the color of the sunrise when I see it. Just beautiful. Then this one is the exciting color name 5238. This is more muted. It has the purples and the pinks, but then it goes into these darker grays and it kind of has a gray wash over it it's just absolutely gorgeous and this is soft and i want to show you see it has inclusions it's got little noops little little bumpy guys that stick out that give it an amazing pretty sure this is a dk weight yarn debbie um it's got can i separate this out without ruining the ball it's got little little tiny boops. So it gives it, it's not just great color, but it's got a marled effect and it's got the texture and it's just, it would work great in any number of the, the lightweight teas that we have in the store, which you should come in. We have rearranged the samples and they're a lot more fun to browse now. Then we've got the exciting color 5245, which is definitely in the blue category. We've got darker blues into the greens with some slight, they're calling it worsted. Okay. So the official name is worsted. I think it probably might grow. Um, I think it's definitely in the worsted to DK range. Ravelry, Ravelry is not always right, <laughs> but yeah, I think we could try it out. I think it depends on how, like some of the looser garments we have in the store, I don't know that it would make a huge difference DK versus worsted, but we can definitely figure that out. So, but if the, but if Barocco says worsted, it's worsted, man. So this is gorgeous. And then I think this is my other favorite color. <laughs> like after I said that, this is five, two, three, six. Look at that. Ah. Oh. It's got the purples and the corals and the greens with some yellow thrown in there. It is just, oh, I love this yarn. I want to knit with it. It's got a very loose ply structure. So you're probably gonna not wanna use a super pointy needle with this. You might, um, you might wanna stick with something a little bit more uh, blunt and you're probably gonna wanna knit this on wooden needles cause it's cotton and it might go slippy slippy gorgeous now what i said about pattern support i have a whole line of pieces that i can show you that is why we swatch yes um so this is so this is i think a reimagining because we had this sample in the winter weight sesame um so they've redone it and reworked it so this is mirasol and this is a really beautiful pattern that takes advantage of the colors and creates these kind of this kind of stripey effect in two different directions. It's an intermediate pattern because it has interesting construction, but it is a great summer weight top that you can throw on. It's just, you can see that the body is worked with the horizontal and then the sides are worked vertically and it is super cute. That is whoop, Marisol. And then we've got Etta, which is another super cute top. This one has some lace 
around the yoke, which is really nice. The lace is kind of subtle. It has uh, more fabric than holds, so that's gonna allow your variegated to shine really nicely. Is that in focus? Gotta make sure it's in focus. See if I can find another shot of it. Here we go. So that is a super cute top. And that is Etta. This is super great. So this is what they're calling like a cocoon style. This is just bat wingy open. It's really gonna be just a big old tubey kind of situation. My guess is it's knit flat side to side and then you seam it would be my, yep, I am right. Here's the schematic. So what you're doing is you're knitting it flat side to side, and then you're gonna seam up the arm sections, leave a hole for your head and the hole for your body. Super cute, love it. Here we go. And you can see how that taper works on the sleeve. This one is gonna be cute, vertical stripes. And this one, I kind of kept on skipping over it because I think this one's amazingly cute. Look at the fringe on the bottom. So this has, the, the body is gonna be worked um, this direction, so we get the vertical stripes, and then probably picking up the sleeves and working those in the round would be my guess. So isn't that cute? Love it. And it is gonna be awesome in any of these colors. Let's see, this is what our schematic, oh, interesting. This is what our schematic looks like. So I might have been wrong on that one, but it's very cool. So it looks like the whole thing is knit flat and then seamed, and you're gonna need the seaming class to be able to do this, unless you already know, which then good on you. So that is, what is this one named? Faye. This one is Faye. Here's one more shot of it. So cute. Oh, that makes sense. So if the arms are out like that, and, okay, the stripes make sense. And then the last one we have is Ginger. If you're not feeling a garment, this is a really pretty shawl. And it is fun because it is mosaic. So this is gonna use two colors that you're striping together and using the slip stitch technique to create a design. And um, it's not completely readily evident in these photos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the chart because this is what a mosaic chart looks like. The, you can see that you've got the pink is the color you're gonna be knitting, and then the gray is the color you're gonna be slipping. So, and then, um, and that's actually, they're only slipping the one color. So that is what it looks like. So if this looks like something you'd like to do, then you might wanna take up my mosaic class, not next week, but the next week, and you can do that one. So. Those are, that is our new Barocco yarn. Love those patterns. And it got me thinking about uh, summer weight yarns because you always get the, you live in Florida. When in the world can you possibly knit? <laughs> and because everybody just automatically assumes knitting equals wool or even fuzzier things. And we have, and, and the first time I came to this store, uh, just as a patron, um, I was amazed by the variety and beautiful non-wool yarns that Susan stocked in the store. So I pulled some of them to show to you. <laughs> Laura's laughing at me. So this is our Ritual Dyes. And I'm gonna show you the color palette here. Isn't it gorgeous? So this is natural yarn. It is, um, this one is 60% organic cotton and blended with 40% linen. And this is fingering weight, 382 yards to 100 grams. It is absolutely beautiful yarn. It has astounding stitch definition. Now, in the skein, it does not feel soft. It definitely has a almost, um, I hate to use the word because it isn't, it's almost twiny. I mean, it's like cotton twine. It, it definitely has a stiff feel to it. And that stiffness is from the linen. And so linen is a, what's called a bast 
fiber and linen and flax both fall into that category they come from grasses and what it is is since they grow as grass they have very long fibers and so if you imagine trying to take a stiff piece of grass and folding it around a pencil instead of curving it's gonna kind of do little angle things and make like a multi polyhedron around it as opposed to actually smoothly going around and that's because it's got stiffer fibers in it that don't break as easily um, so that is why it's a stiffer feel but you get that while you're knitting but bass fibers are very very strong and you can throw them in the washing machine and even if it's 100% linen throw them in the dryer and the more more they get messed with think about your favorite linen pants with wear they become soft with washing they become soft so working with it at front it's not going to feel like wool but when you knit it and you clean it and you soak it it softens up and it just becomes beautiful now this is more cotton than linen so it is softer than just a regular linen would be and it's going to breathe absolutely beautifully uh, the linen though cotton if something's 100 percent cotton it has a tendency to grow it has a tendency to to droop and what the linen in this blend is going to do is fight that tendency. So it's gonna help your garment keep better shape. So that is why we've got this cotton blend. And the colors are lamb's ear, peony, quartzite. This is natural, this is the natural color. And this is prairie flay. So these are lovely. Now what I mentioned about cotton cotton having a tendency to grow and to droop see cotton is a heavy fiber and left to its own devices it doesn't it's not like wool it doesn't have any grabbiness so it doesn't hold on to itself so it kind of goes whoop. so that's why I want to show you we have kobasi so kobasi is cotton bamboo silk and this is the DK so it is 55% cotton 16% bamboo 21% elastic nylon and 8% silk and adding in that elastic again it's going to do similar things to what the linen did in this yarn and it's going to help any garment you make or any blanket you make out of this yarn hold its shape now because it's elastic that means when you try to block it it's going to pull back so this isn't going to be exactly your best choice for any fancy lace but it's got great stiff and stitch definition. It'll be fine and it'll stay nice and bouncy. So it'll be great for cables and texture and it's a lot of fun. The only thing I would say is, hmm, unless you're fine with just the lace being really understated, it's not gonna hold it like a block because that elastic's gonna pull it back. But this is a fantastic yarn for baby stuff because this, you can, um, I believe you can throw this in the washer and the dryer, yep. You can see the little there it is it's got the washer and the dryer symbol so this it's great for baby blankets it's great for baby garments it's great for hats because you know it's got that elastic that helps it stay on their head um, there's a fingering weight version that you can even make socks out of for nice lightweight socks I just grabbed a few of the colors that we have but we have a whole like cubbies and cubbies full of this so it is a great and it comes in both solids and these fun kind of multi-tonals there's a blue one and a pink one okay the sole pattern was designed with undine in mind oh how cool so this is the kobasi again another great choice for uh warm weather knitting and then the the last warm weather yarn I pulled to show to y'all is going to sag into my final subject, which I'm going to talk about amazingness of rectangles. You're like, you've finally gone off the deep end, Barbara. In knitting, rectangles are amazing. I'm just telling you this, but this yarn, okay. Oh my gosh, I cannot say enough I love about this yarn. So this is in Zula Breeze, and it 
is a lace weight yarn. This is 65% silk and 35% linen. This color is persimmon. It is 750 yards in this skein. So this is probably in the 100 gram-ish, maybe 113 gram range, but that is a lot of yarn and you can just see it is lace weight. It is a fine yarn, absolutely beautiful. And this silk linen blend is just absolutely amazing. The silk is going to be bring strength and drape and this one because it's so much silk it doesn't have any of the stiffness that the other linen yarn I showed you does um, because the silk is way way drapier than cotton. This is definitely going to be a hand wash kind of situation because it's hand dyed and the silk is not going to like being thrown into the washing machine but a hundred percent silk can be a little bit heavy. Um, it's not crazy heavy and you can do beautiful garments out of 100% silk, but blending it with the linen really lightens it up and makes it just an airy, beautiful thing. And you can make all kinds of gorgeous tops and everything out of it. I'm gonna show you, so this is persimmon. Look at this color, this color I just adore. This is key lime, now I'm hungry. <laughs> But look, and it is just, and you can see that it's hand dyed because you can see it has slight variation. These are solids, but they have the slight hand dyed variation that's gonna give depth and beauty to your knitting. This is aqua. Look at that blue. Oh, oh. it's gorgeous. And you can see because also the silk and the linen are gonna take dye differently, and that contributes to the beauty of the yarn. This is root beer if you want a nice neutral let me stick these back i made them i i okay doesn't this just look like candy it's so great this is orchid a oh, stunning stunning color now if you really like this yarn but the pattern you're looking at is fingering weight you can hold this yarn double you can hold lace double and get up to fingering weight so we can definitely do that this is curry such a happy, happy yellow. This is Misfit, which I'm not sure why it's named that, but it is a beautiful, it is just a little too purple to be lavender. It's almost a berry color. I think it's really beautiful. If blueberry was purple, this is the color it would be. It's kind of the color of blueberry juice. Just love, and I love purple. And this color, this is Creamsicle. Look at that. You can definitely see the variation in the colors. Just gorgeous. And as I said, I want to show you this yarn so that we can talk about rectangles. Sorry. You know I get fibers in my nose. Okay. Rectangles are one of the easiest things to knit, right? Cast on, knit and straight. You can also do rectangles in a bias which is just as easy to knit. It's just got a little increasing and decreasing. And this is a pattern. This is a long rectangle shawl. And it is lace. And when I say it's knit on the bias, oh, whoa. <laughs> the auto color correct and exposure does not like how dark this is. Oh my goodness. Um, let me, here. Okay, now I'm not turning into a one of those minions from that movie. It was trying to be yellow. Okay, so look how long this is. See here? So what it is, is you're casting on, hmm, you're casting on is going to be here, this big long thing here, and you're knitting in this direction, but you're increasing on one edge and decreasing on the other edge, which makes it bias which puts this at an angle. So you've got this simple lace, it's a relatively straight forward lace pattern that repeats and you do a little bit of solid and you do the same lace, but just for a smaller chunk and then you do a little bit of solid and then you just do one row of the diamonds and then you have this big chunk of solid before you repeat the lace on the other side. And what I wanna show you is, see this is a massive, massive shawl, but big rectangles are you would think it's a big, big piece and it would be hard to style, 
but actually the more fabric you have, the easier it is, I have a center, the easier it is to style. So all I did is I held this so that the center was directly under my chin, right? And then I grabbed it, I'm grabbing it on the two lace points, hold it like that, and there. So I put it there. So now I've got like a cowl effect, right? Now reach behind me and pull this leg around. Then I'm gonna reach behind me and pull this leg around. But when I pull this one, I'm gonna pull it under here. And then we've got, I've worn this, this one is warm. It just makes me feel cool. I feel like, like I'm, I feel like I'm hip. <laughs> it's just this super long drapey and you can pull this out as much as you want. So you have this big cowl effect and then I can push it back on my shoulders and you can just style it however you want. You can do, um, I can take the whole thing again, grab it in the middle like this and essentially fold it up and it's more of a scarf like that. I can pull this loop down, pull it around and run this back through. They're just, it's, there's so many different ways you can use. When you have all this fabric, there's just a lot of different ways you can wear it. And let me come back. Do to do. Let me see if people are like talking to me. I'm so far away you couldn't see me. So what I thought, so this was knit in Miss Babs. Oh, see, it turned me yellow again. Miss Babs Katahdin, which is a heavy lace weight yarn. It takes about 1700 yards. I think if we wanted to make, this is called Headless Roses. Okay, and the, the, that is gonna give. So this pattern was a pattern I released a couple years ago, um, and it was my Valentine Days pattern. And my husband has always been of the opinion that the most romantic couple in like TV and movies is Gomez and Morticia Adams. He's always been like, that is his relationship goals. They're so obviously, desperately, passionately in love with each other. And he's always like, they are so romantic. So for Valentine's Day, I designed a shawl for Morticia Adams. And if you've ever watched the TV show or read the, comp the, the, the cartoons, is um, Morticia would get these beautiful long stem roses and they would show her arranging them in vases and she took her clippers and snipped the blooms off because the part of it that she found beautiful was <laughs> the stems with the thorns on it because it was the Adams family. So that is why I called this piece Headless Roses because it is a shawl, a Valentine's Day shawl for Morticia and this dark, dark color is actually Miss Babs Katahdin and the colorway is Yurang, which is from, she has a whole line of, um, she has a whole line of colors that are Adam's family themed. So it just, it just worked. So this is Headless Roses. Um, and I thought if you wanted to make a lighter weight version of it, this would be perfect. So this is the Katahdin, which is a heavy fingering, heavy lace weight, and it, I knit it on fours. You could still knit it on fours, and if you used the breeze, it's gonna be more open and even more lacy, and you're gonna have this big, beautiful piece of fabric that you can drape around yourself, and it would be a great summer or spring weight piece. Now, you're gonna need two skeins, and the yardage isn't quite dead on, but since you're using two skeins and you've got that big solid part in the middle, all you would do is knit the lace and then continue knitting to the solid until you've almost finished the first skein. And keep track of how much solid you knit with that first skein. And when you start the second skein, knit that same amount of solid and then transition into the lace 
because you know you're just splitting it down the middle 50 50 you just got to keep track of how many how many inches or how many rows of solid you knit after lace how many do you get out of one skein because you're putting it into two skeins or you could just do one skein cast it on narrower because just cast it on few, fewer and you can make it scarf weight um someone in my youtube not my youtube um Facebook group actually just recently knit this stole and she knitted out of Aran weight yarn. She really reduced the cast on and took out most of the middle part and made a beautiful piece in Aran weight. So it's a very flexible pattern, but I just would love to see it in this yarn. I think it would be gorgeous and airy and so much fun. This is, you know, this is a lot of wool. It really wants to turn me yellow, doesn't it? This is a lot of wool, not exactly appropriate for in the middle of the summer, but in the silk linen blend, it would be amazing. So, next rectangle. I just think it'd be great in breeze. So here we have another rectangle. This is the Phillips Wrap, and it is absolutely beautiful lace. Again, it is a gorgeous, long rectangle that can be styled in any number of ways. And this is designed, this was designed by, our, by Catherine. And it is um, in the Island Blend Fine. And this is 70% wool, 15% alpaca, and 15% silk. Um, it is in the kind of DK weight range, so we can definitely find another DK weight yarn if we wanted to go into a lighter weight piece. But I'm gonna get up again. Do, 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 do. There we go, <laughs> standing up again. So, no. there we go. So, again, this is one that you could, this could be fun, that you put it on like this, and then depending on how long you make it, you can always tuck it behind you and it kind of gets a shrug effect. Um, you could definitely do the same thing that I talked about with Headless Roses by starting it as a cowl situation and bringing the legs around. And you can see how that would work. You can do it in the scarf style by making yourself a loop. See, you make a loop like this, bring it around, take one leg, stick it through, and then see this, you twist it and stick the other leg through and spend a little time fussing with it and you get this cool knot effect. There's just rectangles. You can do anything with rectangles. And you just, you could just put them on. You know, you can just wear them like a regular, you know, keeps you warm. Um, if it's long enough, you could crisscross it and tie it behind you. You just keep on going. So this is, again, the name of this one is the Phillips wrap. Gorgeous, isn't that beautiful? And you're just knitting straight. It makes, it makes your super fun knitting. Now, behind me, we've had a couple other ones. I'm gonna show you, this one is called the Endless Wrap for very, very good reason. <laughs> it is a huge, now this is in wool stock, which is a beautiful soft wool yarn. Let me grab, dun, dun, dun. it's right here. So wool stock is 100% fine Highland wool and it is worsted weight, this is 123 yards in 50 grams, but we have larger skeins of it. And it is just this beautiful squishy texture with a little bit of ribbing. And it can be, this is definitely one that you could do here. And I'm not a small girl. You could pull it around and fasten it in the back. And then you have that um, Outlander look, I think it's just, enormous and you can do amazing things. You can tie it in knots, flip it over your shoulders, and you will be the snuggliest ever. So that, I gotta check my time. So that is the endless wrap. I'm gonna stick it up here. And then 
we have this. So look at this. This is also a rectangle. So this is a poncho from Rowan. The name of it is Hinchinbrook by Martin Story. And all you do with this is what you're gonna be doing is you are knitting this rectangle, it's all texture here with cable here, and then this right here, you fold that rectangle in half and put a seam and poof, you have a poncho. You could do that like with this, what you would, let me show you. So what you do, oh, I'm off screen. What you do is you line up these edges and then knit it and just leave a hole that's your head opening and you've got a poncho. So ponchos are rectangles. And then finally, this piece is also a rectangle. The magic of rectangles. So look here. This is a rectangle that's knit from the bottom up and it just has holes in it for your arms to go in. So this becomes Miss Finkelstein. I'm getting my model. Oh, she's, she, she has worn her model clothes today. Here you go. Here they, here you go. And see, it makes what's called a waterfall vest. And it just hangs down. It looks really nice on you. You should wear that. <laughs> Yeah, you can it come, it'll come over all the way to your shoulder if you want. The You can pull, yep, up like that. Kind of looking through the mirror, isn't it? Okay, <laughs> thank you, Susan. So that is the Iguazu Fall Vest, Aww. and it is out of my book, Big Yarn, Beautiful Lace Knits. So, the poncho. Okay, so the name of the poncho, I wrote it down, it is... H I N C H I N B R O O K. Hinchinbrook. It's by Martin Story. It's from Rowan. And it is also in the Island Fine, I believe. Um, yeah, they're so long, but don't let these big, long rectangles scare you because there's amazing things that you can do with rectangles. I mean, really? Just a rectangle here. If you make two rectangles, seam it at the arm, seam it up the sides, leave a hole from your head and your arms, you've got a top. The magic of rectangles in knitting, especially right now where the style is um, very much a loose and open and especially for the summer, there's just a lot of beautiful options out there that you can knit with a rectangle. And I just love knitting rectangle shawls. Rectangle shawls are easy and fun and you get into a rhythm with them, especially when they're just consistent. I know it's kind of like making a giant scarf, but sometimes that's fun knitting. I mean, it's not quite as much as making a blanket. So let's see anybody else chatting. So, um, okay. So I think that is everything on my list. I have made a huge mess here. Um, I don't know if you guys were able to see the, where is it? Here, the cables on this are gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Obviously, this is not a summer weight kind of thing. Um, and, you know, I would not encourage someone to make that in cotton because as we talked about, cotton it can get really heavy and the amount of knitting here and the cables at the bottom, it's really gonna elongate it. So you want it in different. Yes, ma'am? The Summer Sesame is on the website. Oh, so the Summer Sesame that we talked about, Susan worked her little fingers off and got this up on the website. Gorgeous, amazing. I, I really can't, I like them all. I really, I mean, I am drawn to the brighter colors. These, I, I really am drawn to those. Um, have you done the vest in a DK or worsted weight? No, the vest is very much designed for bulky weight yarn. Um, it's from my book, which was all bulky weight yarn. Um, but it really, you could, the, the yarn I, we have that I really recommend for it is the Ultra Wool Bulky. 
um, it really isn't, it doesn't look bulky. I mean, it's just the, the yarn gives it a really big graphic look that I just love. And it makes it really super, super open. And it also makes it knit really, really fast. It really is, <laughs> takes way less time than one would think to knit it, especially to make a garment. Um, but no, it's not, if you, it would take a lot of modification to change it to DK or worsted because when you get into DK and worsted, it's gonna get a lot smaller and you're gonna get a lot more repeats and you'd have to redo the math for between the shoulders and I would not recommend that unless you really, really like math. So, okay, thank y'all so much for coming and spending an hour on Wednesday with us. I hope you enjoyed looking at all the fun yarn and maybe got inspired to knit something up. And um, thank you if you watched it live. Thank you if you watched this a uh, little bit later, whatever time it is, I'm glad you joined us. Um, thank you, Cecia. I don't know, is that right? Kesia? Kesia would be my guess. Thank you, Paula. Um, and it's just, as always, a whole lot of fun to chat with y'all. Thank you, Jenna, for being on. And Mary Ann, I'm so excited that y'all come. It's really fun to start seeing the same names over and over again. Um, you know, it's hard to, to, to get some contact right now. And this is one of my most fun parts of my week. Thank you, Lisa, for watching. And I will be back next week. I'm sure we will come up with much more fun things to do. Glad you had fun, Carol. Thank you, Cindy. You enjoy your day too. And um, if there's anything that y'all, any kind of subject y'all want to hear more about or anything that we can focus on, please feel free to talk about that in the comments. Uh, even if this is later, put it in. We can, you know, we keep up with our, we try our best to keep up with our Facebook uh, page and group. Um, I can totally get you all in trouble. That is my job, is to get you in a lot of trouble. I, I am, I, I like scheming and shenanigans. So I will talk to y'all later and have a lovely weekend and have a lot of fun knitting, okay? Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs>